Good day, everyone. Today's 10 interesting facts is about Emmeline Holdo from Star Wars The Last Jedi. Even though she wasn't well received by some fans, I thought getting to know her a bit better would put her in a better light, as she does have a bit of a history with Leia. So, let's get into it. Number 1. A human female, Amelin Holdo, was born on the planet Getalenta during the early Imperial Era. In the year 3 BBY, Holdo joined the Apprentice Legislator, an Imperial organization on Coruscant for youth and politics. While in this program, Holdo met Princess Leia Organa of Alderaan, daughter of Senator Bail Organa. Holdo and Princess Organa spent much time together during senatorial sessions and routine pathfinding training on various worlds such as Alderaan and Felicia. While pathfinding on the planet Parmethe, Haldo discovered Organa's involvement with a rebellion against the Galactic Empire. Soon after, Haldo helped Organa find a passage to the Pekris system in order to warn the fleet of an impending Imperial attack. Number 2 in 2 BBY, the Rebellion became the alliance to restore the Republic. Holdo joined the Rebellion at the start of the Galactic Civil War. Sometime later, Holdo, now a minister, was part of the crew of the CR-90 Corvette Candor. While on a mission smuggling arms to the Rebel Alliance, the ship was caught in the tractor beam and came under fire from an Imperial-class Star Destroyer. The commander of the Candor, Captain Jardar, was killed in the attack, leaving Haldo as the highest ranking officer on board. Haldo ordered the ship, which was caught in a tractor beam, to turn around and face the Star Destroyer. The crew doubted her choice, but reluctantly did as she asked. She then ordered that ship to fire at the open hangar, sending a volley of devastating attacks that opened a hole right through the Star Destroyer. With a plan in mind, Haldo then ordered the crew to punch the ion drive and plow straight through the enemy ship. They did as she ordered and emerged safely on the other side and escaped into hyperspace. The crew was shocked by her plan that it had worked and expressed regret for their reluctance to follow her orders. Haldo's brave strategy did not go unrecognized as she was given the military rank of captain soon after. Number 3. Eventually, the Empire was toppled and replaced with a new Republic. However, an Imperial Remnant reorganized into the First Order in 28 ABY, Organa created the resistance to oppose them. By 34 ABY, during the conflict between the two groups, Haldo had joined the resistance and served as Vice Admiral and Commanding Officer of the cruiser Ninka. Number 4. After the attack on Starkiller Base, she was posted on the resistance ship Ninka. On Dakar, just before the First Order's arrival, she briefed the resistance pilots from Cobalt and Crimson Squadron about the events of the annihilation of the Holstein system, as well as the subsequent destruction of Starkiller Base. She offered ammunition from her ship to help arm their squadrons. Number 5. Having heard of Rose Tico's previous accomplishments with Cobalt Squadron, Haldo asked her to take a position on the Ninka as part of the maintenance team. During this time, she ran an operation to steal the head of Admiral Matheson's protocol droid, which had recordings of every conversation that the Admiral had in the last five years from the space station Brooks Dion as proof of New Republic High Command's inaction against the growing threat of the First Order. After the threat, she and her crew evaded the New Republic Defense Force Rapier Squadron, led by Commander Poe Dameron. Number 6 During an attack on the Radis, the ship's commander, Leia Organa, was ejected from the bridge and left unconscious, the attack also killing the entire High Command stationed on the bridge. Following the chain of command, Commander Larma Dacey delegated overall command of the resistance to Haldo, 
who had transferred from her ship to the Radis to take full command. After thanking Darcy, Taldo addressed the situation by explaining that the 400 personnel on three ships comprised the very last of the resistance, but they would survive. Haldo had the remaining ships continue full ahead to keep out of the First Order's range, but their fuel reserves dwindled and they lost their medical frigate when it ran dry. Haldo received a communication from the captain informing her that the rest of its crew had escaped and were heading her away, but the transmission was lost as the First Order destroyed the defenseless frigate. Shortly after, Haldo's own ship, the Ninka, was destroyed as well. Number 7 Ho Dameron and Haldo were not on good terms, immediately butting heads over the issues of Dameron's recent demotion and apparent lack of any decisive action. Deeming him as impulsive and reckless fly flyboy, Haldo recognized that as a liability rather than an asset for the current situation, and instead ordered him to stick to his post and follow her orders. Unfortunately, Haldo's lack of transparency with Dameron would have serious repercussions. Number 8 When Tico and former First Order Stormtrooper Finn devised a plan to infiltrate the First Order's flagship, the Supremacy, Dameron went behind Haldo's back and sanctioned their mission, which ultimately failed and resulted in the First Order eventually learning of Haldo's plans. When Haldo ordered the crew of the Radis to evacuate to the planet Crate via rescue transports, Dameron and some crew members held the Admiral and several senior officers at gunpoint and took control of the ship. Haldo escaped the mutiny, however, by kicking a steam pipe and stunning her antagonists while Argana who had recovered, incapacitated Dameron and sent him to the crate with the rest of the crew. Although, labor, although labeling Dameron a troublemaker, Haldo and Argana agreed that they liked him. Haldo refused to board a transport herself, though, and told Argana that someone had to stay on the Radis to keep it going, and said she would be honored to do it. Though Argana was extremely reluctant to take on more losses that day, especially another good friend, Haldo consoled her and bid her friend goodbye with the phrase, May the Force be with you. Number 9 Haldo willed the transports on their way from the ship's secondary command bridge, but was horrified when the First Order detected and fired on the fleeing transports, destroying many of them. After personally witnessing the demise of a transport while conferring with its frantic pilot, Haldo resolved to prevent any more deaths and fire up the hyperdrive on the Radis. Both the Resistance and First Order thought she was fleeing the battle zone, but General Hux ignored the ship as he thought it was simply a distraction, only realizing Haldo's real intent when the Radis turned to face the Supremacy. Activating the hyperdrive, Haldo rammed the supremacy at light speed, slicing the mammoth dreadnought in two, destroying much of its escort fleet, and coincidentally saving a captured Finn and Tico, who were about to be executed when the impact occurred. Number 10 Haldo was tall and had blue eyes and light-colored skin. In her youth, Haldo rebelled against the exterior of her homeworld's culture and expressed herself by dyeing her hair vibrant colors, wearing vibrantly colored clothing, and going on daring escapades. In spite of that, Haldo shared the core values of Gatalita. She believed in the importance of joy, love, and spiritual harmony, showed interest in the practices of her planet like meditation and astrology, and she was knowledgeable of the galaxy. She also loved going barefoot, Organa found Holdo insightful and charming, but also irritating at times. Haldo had quirky personality, often getting distracted, speaking in riddles and metaphors, with a monotone, sing-song voice and being eccentric. 
She was by no means stupid, however, and her oddball persona hit a keen intellect. She was not afraid of death and dreamed of dangerous adventures. Haldo was a determined and patriotic person, able to react to changing circumstances and ready to sacrifice herself for the cause. As a commander, she had a cool head for a greater strategy and expected her orders to be executed precisely, as shown during her time in command of the Radis. Haldo was known to carry a Defender 5 sporting blaster, which was favored by many nobles on her homeworld. According to Dameron, Haldo was recognized within the resistance as a great strategic mind due to her actions at the Battle of Chiron Belt and was admired even by Admiral Akbar. So this is the information that I could find on Haldo. What do you think of Haldo and the Last Jedi? Has knowing her past changed your mind about her? Let me know in the comments section. And also please consider subscribing to the channel to watch our videos as they come out. And it really does help out the channel a lot. Perhaps share this video with other people, that'd be awesome. Take care and have a great day.